Today, our story is about the case of the mysterious Danilov maniac, who in 2004-2007 brutally murdered seven girls and women in Cherepovitz. Serial killer used homemade boa constrictors and skillfully covered his tracks, instilling fear in the inhabitants of the city. For help in catching Danilovsky maniac authorities promised a reward of a million rubles, and investigators checked for involvement in the murders of 14,000 citizens. But the criminal has not been caught so far. The Danilovsky maniac committed his first attack in February 2004. Marina Ostrovskaya, a 17-year-old resident of Cherepovitz, Vologda region, planned to visit the family of her fiancé, who was serving in the army and often wrote her letters, which he passed on through his parents. Leaving work for a lunch break around 14 hour, Marina decided not to waste time and took a shortcut. From the building located on Sovetsky Avenue, she went through the vacant lot on Danilov Street. It is by the name of this street that the maniac would later be named. The girl seemed to have no cause for concern. She was walking during daylight hours. However, Ostrovskaya never reached her destination. The alarm was raised by her parents, who were worried that their daughter had not returned home in the evening. The Ostrovskys appealed to the police, but they were unable to find Marina on the hot tracks. The girl disappeared without a trace. In August 2004, when the search for Marina was still going on, the city was shaken by terrible news. The body of Irina Popova, a 19-year-old student of the Metallurgical College, was found in the Patinsky wasteland. She had been raped and strangled. And in early September, 22-year-old Tatiana Beva was killed in the same way. The maniac attacked his victim behind the local art school when Beva was returning home from a disco. Three months later, on December 8th, the body of 17-year-old Tatiana Maximova was found on a vacant lot near the military commandant's office on Sovetsky Prospect, with signs of violence and strangulation. The killer hid the victim under branches and leaves, piling snow on top. The Danilovsky maniac committed his next attack on June 26, 2005. 31-year-old Lyudmila Miroshnichenko disappeared then. The woman, who lived in a house on Babushkina Street, was supposed to meet a friend on Parkova Street at 1 p.m. that day, but did not show up for the meeting. As in the case of Ostrovskaya, Miroshnichenko's body was not discovered immediately. Both victims were found after another brutal attack. On July 14, 2005, Svetlana Stepanova, together with her sister and a friend, was going to the beach of the Sheksna River. As the company passed through a vacant lot, the girl noticed that her sandal strap had come undone and stopped to correct the clasp. The companions did not wait for Svetlana and walked forward a little, and when they turned around, they saw a terrible picture. They saw that the stranger was dragging the girl into the bushes. The boys screamed. The startled killer took the girl's life threw the body and fled through the yard of the remedial school. Rushing to the bushes, Svetlana's friend and sister saw her bag with a swimsuit and a towel on the road. Stepanova herself, half undressed and with her throat slit, was lying in the bushes a little away. The operatives who arrived on the scene began combing the vacant lot and reached the abandoned building of the police station. This construction site was frozen at the foundation level, but the builders managed to equip an underground garage it was there that the remains of Marina Ostrovskaya and Lyudmila Miroshnichenko were found. The killer dumped their bodies in a concrete pit and covered them with car tires. Inspecting the garage, the operatives noticed strange pornographic drawings on the walls. Apparently, they were left by the Danilovsky maniac. Policemen brought the friend and sister of the murdered Svetlana Stepanova to the department. The detectives hoped that the witnesses will be able to describe the appearance of the maniac but they did not remember the face of the attacker and could not help the investigation. Meanwhile, forensic experts found that Ostrovskaya and Miroshnichenko were raped and strangled, and the maniac killed them with a homomata lash. Genetic expertise confirmed that the same person was involved in the deaths of both victims. Investigators suggested that the Danilovsky maniac could live not far from the vacant lot where the murders were committed. The investigators checked several dozen men living on Danilov Street. All suspects were taken handwriting samples and blood for DNA determination. In total, during the investigation, 14,000 residents of Cherpovets were checked for involvement in the murders. Several people were even detained, but Danilovsky maniac was not among them. We have repeatedly sent evidence for various examinations, but the process is long, 
because the laboratories are located in different cities. In the laboratory in Ivanovo, it turned out that the expert was detained while taking a bribe. The investigators did not rule out that the serial killer, having learned that he was being hunted, could move from Cherepovitz to another place. It was also assumed that the Danilovsky maniac could go on the sly and deliberately get behind bars for some minor crime to be out of suspicion. It seemed that the investigators were not far from the truth. The killer disappeared for two long years, and the citizens of Cherepovets breathed easy. But in the summer of 2007, Danilovsky maniac again went on the hunt. On June 11th, 17-year-old schoolgirl Natalia Zakalova was walking along the forest belt near the Oktyabrsky Bridge. The girl was going to the pier at the ski base on the bank of the Sheksna River, a vacation spot popular with fishermen and locals. It took only a couple of minutes to walk to the pier, when Natalia called her parents who were waiting for her on the shore, and said that she would be there soon. However, time passed, and the girl never showed up. Zakalova's worried parents tried to call their daughter, but her phone was disconnected. Then they rushed to the police, and several outfits immediately went to the scene. The officers took sticks in their hands, stood shoulder to shoulder, and went in a chain to comb the forest belt. After 15 minutes they found the girl's body. She had been raped and murdered. As it turned out, Natalia had only 15 meters to go to the shore when she was attacked by the maniac. Questioning possible witnesses detectives found a man who, according to him, saw a strange man in dirty clothes and glasses pass near the place where the body of the murdered schoolgirl was found. The perpetrator appears to be over 30 years old, probably under 50 years old, about 180 centimeters tall, dense build, short cropped hair, with small gaps or some areas of gray hair at the back of the head. One of the most striking features that the witness described in the maniac was his hazy eyes. The survey of pupils and teachers of the remedial school, located near the abandoned building of the police station, also bore fruit. As it turned out, they encountered a strange man drawing pornographic pictures on the walls of the educational institution. These witnesses also noted that the stranger has a very strange look, because of which in Cherepovitz maniac dubbed killer with cloudy eyes. However, the police did not rule out that the suspicious man, who was seen at the scene of the murder of Natalia Zakalova, was an ordinary marginal, who walked through the forest belt in search of empty bottles. Be that as it may, from the words of witnesses the police made a sketch of the suspect. Leaflets were pasted almost all over Cherepovitz, but it did not help. The reward, which the mayor's office announced for help in catching the Danilov maniac, did not work either. At first, the authorities were ready to pay 500,000 rubles, later, the amount rose to a million. But this move only hindered the work of the investigation. The police received a barrage of calls and messages from citizens eager for money but without any valuable information. Meanwhile, according to Vyacheslav Dunayev, former head of the Cherepovitz Criminal Investigation Department, the criminal could have been a business traveler who had already left Cherepovitz by that time. We have his DNA, an orientation on him sent all over Russia, but no information that our villain was somewhere lighted up, has not been received. Although, believe me, we did a lot of work to solve these crimes. We had information about the approximate age of the murderer, there were some other operational dat Vyacheslav Dunayev, former head of the Cherepovitz Criminal Investigation Department. Such people think outside the box. By 2008 the number of volumes of the criminal case of Danilovsky Maniac reached 18, but he could not be caught. Even his whips he made himself, fearing that he could be identified by his purchases of belts, leashes and similar goods. Investigators did not rule out that this prudence of the killer was explained by his past experience in law enforcement. Such cases are always difficult to solve because the criminal plans everything in advance and usually leaves no trace. And don't forget that these are often people with mental disabilities, and they think outside the box. In July 2008 in the hands of the police was an inadequate resident of Cherepovets. In the area of Salt Park, he suddenly attacked two girls and tried to drag both into the bushes. They shouted, eyewitnesses called the police, and the attacker was detained. The police assumed that he was the same Danilov maniac. But the genetic examination showed that the detainee was not involved in a series of murders in Cherepovets. A year later, the police had a new suspect, similar to the sketch of the Danilov maniac. 
He turned out to be a 70-year-old resident of Veliki Ustyug, who lived with a 54-year-old friend in the Dacha Cooperative at the Bears, Vologda district. The coincidence with the sketch was partly explained by the fact that the pensioner looked much younger than his years investigators learned about him. When after another quarrel, an elderly man in a fit of jealousy killed his girlfriend, with whom he had been in a relationship for 10 years, and was detained. Then it turned out that in 2004-2007, when he had been in Cherepovitz for a series of murders, he had been there from time to time. The man's blood group matched the samples found on the victim's bodies, and the investigator's confidence that he was the Danilov maniac grew day by day. But the genetic examination showed that the detectives were mistaken. As a result, the detainee was punished only for the murder of his cohabitant. November 2011 for residents of Cherepovitz was overshadowed by the disappearance of 19-year-old student Svetlana Filuk. On the day of her disappearance, the girl quarreled with her young man and, upset by this, went for a walk. In the evening, Svetlana called her lover twice and said that she was on Batyushkova Street. He promised to come, but when he got there, Svetlana was no longer there, and she never returned home. The search for Filyuk began the next day. Divers searched for the body at the bottom of the nearest river, and volunteers, hoping to find the girl alive, combed the local forest belt but no one found any trace of Svetlana. Soon there were witnesses who saw the missing girl on the October bridge. The girl was sitting on the breaker and smoking. In addition to the variant of violent death, the investigation worked out different versions. It was not excluded that Svetlana could commit suicide or become a victim of an accident. Meanwhile, rumors spread across Cherepovitz that the girl was a victim of Danilovsky maniac, who again went hunting. The city said that investigators allegedly found the bodies of several other young Cherepovits. Policemen as could calm citizens and denied these terrible rumors. Only one body of an unidentified person was found, a skeletonized corpse near the first cemetery. No other bodies, neither dismembered, neither girls nor men have been found. And we don't even have any missing girls matching the description of this case. The remains of Svetlana Filyuk were found only in the summer of 2012. First volunteers, once again combing the neighborhood of Oktyabrsky Avenue, found Filyuk's jeans and shoes. However, the fact that things belonged to the missing Cherepov resident, the searchers did not immediately recognize. And soon after that, the volunteers came across a shallow hole in which Svetlana's body was lying, covered with aspen branches. Apparently, the killer had taken advantage of the dense bushes that grew along Oktyabrsky Avenue, dragged the girl there, raped, and strangled her. After the discovery of the body of the victim, the city authority is ordered to cut down the bushes along the interior avenue. However, Svetlana Filok was not officially included in the number of victims of the Danilov maniac. Genetic examination did not confirm the similarity of DNA samples found on the bodies of the victims of the serial killer and Svetlana. Nevertheless, the handwriting of her killer was strikingly similar to that of the wanted maniac. In addition, the last time Svetlana was seen not far from the place where the seventh victim, Natalia Zakalova, was killed in 2007. Therefore, local residents did not even doubt that Filuk was also killed by the Danilovsky maniac. Meanwhile, the unfinished building of the ROVD, where the serial killer buried his victims, the city authorities decided to demolish. We will demolish it, the building, and sell it at auction for office space. I guarantee, if the regional police department has a desire to build a new building, we will allocate land. But this den of a maniac, as journalists call it, must be liquidated. Despite the fact that in the course of the investigation about 20 versions were worked out, 1,200 people were questioned and about 180 expert examinations were conducted, the law enforcement authorities still have not managed to get on the trail of the Danilov maniac.